Today I'm continuing my series on solving some math Olympia problems. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so the question says, two squares of side one have a common centre. Show that the area of the intersection is greater than three quarters. Okay, so the first thing we can do with this is basically draw what's happening. So what we have is we have a square and what it's saying is we have two squares of side one. So each of the lengths are one. So this is one, this is one, this is one, and this is one. Um, and we have two of them and they both have a common centre. So in this example, we'll have another square and it will have this centre as well. Okay, so let's just copy. In fact, I will copy both of these. So when we rotate, it's a bit easy to see. So I'll just copy another square and obviously both their centres are common, so we overlap. There is an intersection, of course, because they're on top of each other, but there's not really anything fancy that's going on. We know that the area of intersection of both of these here must just be one because the area of the square is one times one. Um, so yeah, so nothing too fancy when we just have a square on top of a square. But if we begin to rotate this square, and I'll try to do it so that it's maintaining the lengths of one. You'll notice that we then begin to have this intersection between the two squares. And that's this area within here. So I'll just highlight that. So it's this area in here. So this is what we're asked to find. We can say that we know that the area of this entire outer square, so all of this in here, that's one. We know that. So we can say that the area of intersection... Well, that's going to equal 1 minus, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these triangles. And they're all equal by rotational symmetry. And then we'll end up with the area of intersection inside here. So we can do this. We can say, yeah, 1 minus, we'll have 4. And if we say for simplicity that this length here is y this length here is x, then we'll have 4 times by, the area is going to be a half xy. So this is just going to equal 1 minus 2xy. So the first method that we can do is by doing this area of intersection where we have this formula here for the area of intersection. And I'm going to show you that method first. It's a very long-winded method. There is a very elegant solution to this problem, which is why I'm featuring it on this channel. But I'm going to save it until the end, just so you can see how we can do all of this calculation to find, you know, to prove that this is the case for this type of approach. But there is a really nice approach uh, and I'll get to it at the end of the video. OK, so we're going to continue with this approach. And by labelling this triangle here, we have y and x. We can say this is also y. This is also x and we can do the same for the other sides of the triangles. OK, so there is one extra thing that we can denote on here and we can add another variable known as z. And we're going to call z this quantity in here. And by the same token, that is the same value that you have here and here and so on around. So what you'll notice is each of these triangles that we have that are denoted in red, they're actually the same as the triangles that are denoted in orange here. And that's just by the rotational symmetry of both of these squares. OK, so by that reasoning, we can then start incorporating some, making some formulas with x, y and z. So we've denoted z as this line here. We know that this is x and we know that this is y here. So quite rightly, we can add up all those variables and we'll get one because the length of the side itself is one. We can start by labeling equation one because we're going to need these equations later. And we can say quite rightly that x plus y plus z equals one. And that's by the reasoning that I've just said here that this entire length here is one. OK, cool. And I'll just say here by side equal one. Now, the other thing that we can say is we can use a bit of Pythagoras. So we can look at these triangles. We know that they're right, ang right angle triangles and therefore we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So we can say that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Okay, 
So these are the two main equations. Now we're going to need the area of intersection as well, so I'll just denote that uh, equation three. Okay, and now what we can do is we can do some combining of these to, to eliminate some variables. So we can first start by saying, okay, let's combine one and two. So we can say that x squared, so this is from equation two, x squared is going to equal z squared, but we can rearrange what z is from the first equation. So by one, we know that z must equal, it's going to be one. So if we take over y to that side and x to that side, you'll end up with z equals one, and then you'll have minus x minus y. So here we'll have z squared is going to be one minus x minus y, all squared. We can expand this out and you'll notice, well you might notice straight away that this x squared y squared is going to eventually cancel. So we have 1 plus x squared plus y squared, expanding out the brackets, minus 2x minus 2y plus 2xy. Now just remember we've got an equation that has this in and we'll use that in just a moment. So we can immediately say well this is these two cancel and these two cancel. So we can rewrite this and say that 2xy equals, now the reason I'm doing 2xy on this side is because like I just mentioned, we have equation three up here that has a 2xy in it. Okay, so 2xy is gonna equal 2x plus 2y minus one. We're gonna label this equation number four and we can substitute this into three. So if we say, into three, we end up saying that, okay, area of intersection, and I'm just repeating what equation three was again. So area of intersection was one minus two x y, but because we know what two x y is, we can say, okay, one minus two x plus two y minus one. Simplifying all this, we end up with two minus two x minus 2y. And simplifying this further, we can say this is the same as 2 minus 2 lots of x plus y. You might notice that x plus y is actually equal to 1 minus z. So we can substitute a z into here and find the area of intersection in terms of the z variable. So we can say that this is the same as 2 minus 2 lots of 1 minus z so if we simplify all of this, we end up with 2z. Okay, so the area of intersection is actually given by 2z. Nice. What we can do is we can basically look at the rotation of this square and we can look at when z is the longest and when z is the smallest. And in the question itself, it's asking us to show that the area of the intersection, uh, and which is what we've just calculated, so we know the area of intersection is 2z, and we're asked to show that that's greater than three quarters. So what I'll just note here is we want to show that the area of intersection which equals 2z is greater than three quarters. We can also rewrite this and say oh, we want to prove that z is greater than 3 over 8. So this is what we're trying to prove now, is that z is greater than 3 over 8. And we can do that, like I said, by looking at when z is shortest, when z is longest. Okay, so we can consider different values of z. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do something similar to what we did before when we drew our squares, and we're going to start rotating it and just have a look at where, what z is in different cases. Let's say we have a very sl minor rotation, so a very, very slight rotation here. We're going to do a rotation that, well, try, I'm trying to keep the, uh, the length of the square the correct size. We're going to do a rotation where it's exactly 45 degrees, okay? And I'm going to do the same again, but we're going to go even further this time. So we're going to rotate this, and it's going to rotate all the way until it's done full 90 degrees. Okay, so we can look at the z value in each of these. So here, let's denote it with a red. So this is z here. In this example, we have z here. And in this example, we have z here. 
Okay, now hopefully it has jumped out to you that this middle image here is when z is the smallest. Because if I just begin, you know, rotating this one again, we start when the squares are overlapping and we begin to rotate. And you see that z at this point is quite big. And it starts getting a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller until we get to this point where it's 45 degrees and therefore x must equal y in this case. And then again, we keep rotating and z gets bigger. Okay, so I'll just move that back to how it was to begin with. So what we can say is, we can say the smallest value, smallest value of z is when x equals y. Uh, and the, just to do, illustrate that, this here is, I think I called this y, I think I called this x. Let me just check I did that correctly. Yeah, x and y. Okay. Um, and here we have when they're equal because the value in here, it's an isosceles. Whoops. It's an isosceles triangle. So we know that the smallest value of z is when x equals y. So we can substitute this into 4. So if we just find 4 again. So this is 4 here. And this gives us a relationship between x and y uh, together. So we can say that 2xy... Well, from 4, we had 2xy equal 2x plus 2y minus 1, which when we make x equals y, this implies that 2x squared must equal 2x plus 2x minus 1, which is implied we have 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And we can solve this, we can um, do the quadratic formula and find the, the roots of this um, equation here. And what we find is, so let me just write this here. I'll just do it below. You'll have to excuse my maths, it's jumping around all over the place. <laughs> but what we find is that x, sorry, x not x squared, is the same as one, well, the, the value we get of x out of this is one plus or minus one over the square root of two. And obviously because x itself is this here and the side length is 1, it's never going to exceed 1, we can discard discard the plus root. So we don't need this plus root, we just have the minus. And we have the x e is equal to this and therefore y is also equal to this in this example in the middle here, this image in the middle. Now we have this value for x and it's also the value for y, we can therefore solve what z equals in this given case. So by 1, we have that x plus y plus z equals 1, which implies that 2 minus 2 over root 2, and that's just because we've got two of these, plus z equals 1, which, is, which implies that z is greater than root 2 minus 1. And if you input this into your calculator, what you find out is this is actually greater than 3 over 8. And therefore, what we have proved is the smallest possible value of z is always greater than 3 over 8. And therefore, any value beyond that z value is always going to be greater than 3 over 8. And therefore, we have proved that the area of intersection itself is also greater than 3 over 4 because the area of intersection equal 2 multiplied by z. Okay, so that was a very... <laughs> very long, long way of calculating this. And obviously in the Olympiad questions, this is not something that you'd want to be spending this long uh, of your time doing. But I wanted to show you a very long way that you could calculate it um, and show you that it is possible to calculate just by geometry. But I'm going to show you the really elegant solution and oh, it's it's chef's kiss, honestly, it's beautiful. So let me just copy, in fact, I'll, I'll draw the squares again. So we'll call this the elegant solution. And all, it's literally like two lines, two words, two words, two lines of two sentences. I think that's what I'm going for there. So the very elegant solution basically says that what you can notice is if you have squares, if you have two squares and they have a common centre, you can draw a circle within the square. So what I'll do is I'll just draw, might not be a very good circle, but we have this circle here. You can draw a circle with inside the square that's touching the sides of the square. And what you can notice is this circle itself 
is always going to be less. So the area of this circle is always going to be less than the area that we have from the intersection. And obviously the area of a circle, so area of circle is going to equal pi r squared, which is going to be pi over 4. And the reason for that is because the radius of these squares is a half and r squared is a quarter and therefore the area of the circle is pi over 4 and for that reason we can say that pi over 4 is always greater than 3 over 4 and therefore we have answered the problem which is saying that we have to prove that the area of intersection is greater than 3 over 4 and there you go that's the really really elegant solution i really really enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed watching this video if you did enjoy this video then please like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all in the next one